Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another propaganda cast. Me, your host, Imperial Dane here. We are off to a one versus one on Semoski. We shall be watching. I am Chet, so you're fighting for the Soviet Union. And the 20th Rifle Corps versus Comrade Obvious. Fighting here for the first SS Panzer Division. Leibstandarte. Let me know anything here. Special Life Command to start here from I Am Chets with the conscripts on the way there. We'll see what gets after that. Could it be snipers, scout cut, or the Stravniki commanders? A guard motor, Soviet army, and Soviet reserve army. Been a bit of a while since we've seen that one. With the combat op used with mobile defense, spearhead, and Jäger armor. Two grenades already here queued up for Comrade Obvious. Pulling back here to I Am Chats. And then he's actually retreating the conscripts so they move up faster from here, so he's quicker that way can get them moving. Interesting little manoeuvre, not a bad one, not a bad one. In particular, not when the headquarters placed rather close here to sort of the other edge of the base. Here it might not have quite the same I effect on the north. Unit. But Scout can actually run here next, rather rapidly adding some motorization here. So there's forces, the M3A1, 50 and 30 caliber mounted. Combat news moving about there, looks like he's sending towards more of a center towards precision. All to note, he did not go for the fuel point first with his combat That is usually what you'd expect. But I'm Chet's actually sent his engineers inwards towards the village. Leading for a secondary unit that will come later to actually take the fuel point. That is actually a bit rare. Whereas we do see here that Comrade Obvious is actually heading towards here with the pioneers having already there, having thus a small fuel advantage. Leading off to core other points. The pioneers are coming under fire from the scout car. 50 caliber fire. Raking the poor bastards, sending them fleeing into a nearby farmhouse. Schnellheinz, close the door! You need something better. Transferring to cold, they're staying close to each other. No chance of taking that, we've seen by Comrade Obvious. With a third squad arriving here, heading northwards. Objective secure. Scout car rapidly pulling away here. Might be heading towards other targets, crashing through fences and barrels. Clearly the Soviet people who know nothing about traffic regulations. But there we go, coming up half silk, and he's actually taking quite a bit of damage there, down to almost half. Now he's quick staying to come and showing he takes the least amount of damage as possible from the 50 caliber. Good moving there and good sharp thinking. Always good to see that. Always good to see that. Scout cover average pulling away as much as moving forward. Need to be careful here getting caught out in the middle of the road, though, at the same time the conscript also do. Pulls back his water house. Slight mistake here, though. Note here that essentially they can't really fire well out this building, particularly since they pull over here, there's only one winner they can fire back from. So that was this, or perhaps the most not very efficient movement there from I'm Chets. And his conscript attack taking much more damage now. Without actually doing a lot of damage in the turn, so that was overall not so strong on that. Barely did any damage to the Germans, now suffering heavy losses there to the country squad. Need to fall back, 50 caliber. Scout car there acting as a rear guard. And we're seeing a wreck, a server server, I mean, we're seeing Reveculous out. And also, a little fun fact, he's actually gotten a bullet and up that increases their accuracy as well. So there we go, armed with a pair of DPs. Ready to blast away some fascists, pushing off here for the cut-off point, right-hand side, though at the same time being lost, looks like here he's sort of focusing on this part, and ignoring this part, Mansell's going up here, good move there by Am Chets. Additional grenadiers, it would seem, so going for a pretty heavy grenadier start, no support weapons. Sniper also arriving by Kain Granat in there for Kain Maschinengewehr. You need something demolished? Old fireball they popped up there, doesn't want to take any sort of city shots it would seem. This cabin moving up, there we go. And a bit of DD fire as well there from the scout car. Quickly popping four hinds down. And the guy squad over here loading most most of their men to a single mine, that was pretty brutal. Pushing into war tick and it's not going to go. And there we go, country squad trying to cut off on the treat there. Bold move, nice maneuver there from my chest. He needs to stop up though. Remember, your troops don't shoot while spending all today. Shoot him up. There we go. Still managed to pull off. Can got wiped out? A heavy loss there initially for Comrade Obvious. Obviously. Do see some light machine and give it up. But already here, Comrade Obvious is positioned in the center a bit in a perilous situation. 
a command bunker would have allowed him to sort of establish a bit more forward precision they could hold on, but ultimately will have to retreat here in that department. He is perhaps looking a bit in a nasty situation. Sniper fire running in, of course, he's got to worry about the scout as well. With the DPs in there, go full retreat here. So Jartin retreating from the village, they are fleeing! So already here, Comrade obviously to start, he's running into some rather nasty issues. As we do see that I am chasing, it's increasing the pressure. He's doing his best to be an utter nuisance here. Militarizing his regulars and creating quite the nasty little force here with machine guns in a single little car. Oh, Rifle Nader catching the mining engineers. A wipe there, actually costing Iron Chet some units. Snipers holding up in a ditch, trying to get away. Oh, well, oh, no, they are a bit easy targets here. And there we go. One made it out there, the other one, well, obviously didn't. And there we go, harassing a few points as well. I mean, very nice, aggressive play here from Iron Chet. He is not holding back at all. <laughs> Noting like to make a nice company up here for Comrade Obvious. If I want to get the scout car to deal with the other bastard scout car, I'll just give him something a bit more mobile to pressure. I am Chet, I would imagine. Conscripts here. M3. Supply sector under attack. Oops, moving about to Dalton on the move. The Kev left a bit splitting up too far. I'm also making a mines with us. Good there. He can't really afford to take more chances with those bloody mines. In particular, not exactly home to get scout cars, so that could easily put a stop to any dreams of militarized vengeance. And there we go, the 2 2 1 arriving. Mine engaging up here, Grenadier is holding up a country squad. Larger force moving through the north. Scout here, by the way, dying into repairs. I mean, I am Chet's can't really keep this up for much longer. At least not if he intends to keep it going. And there we go. A rapid retreat. Conscripts roaring rather rapidly away from the face of the Germans. And there we go. Scout coming in. Got it's not holding up much longer here in the village center. Taking fucking fire. Need to fall back to Germany. And there we go. The scout car pulls up. Lamberting and firing. Nice German position there. Sort of. And there we go. He might find himself on the juicy note here. They have anti-tank units. There we go. Trying to get away. He actually looks like pulling out towards him because he's realizing there might be something else. There we go. Two trying to pull off the retreat. Nice thinking there, actually, by Comrade Obvious. It is, in fact, not what most people would have done in the more sort of the obvious move. They would have tried getting back to the base, and thus he actually avoided a direct move yet. Well, knock it out. So that was actually quite sharp thinking there from Copy Obvious expecting such an ambush or perhaps having to take it with the scout car perhaps a bit there. Pioneers going up, Pioneers holding up as well, can there go, putting a light machine gun couldn't start the building. Good job there, Pioneers still holding it up front and not into good. And there we go, scout car with DP, troops just standing where they're going to need to fall back, at least some of them do. Nice, we're almost wiped out, at the same time the council might lose, yes there we go, squad cut down retreat, a heavy loss there for the Soviet Union. And he's continuing to hold up here quite stalwartly. Oh no! I am checked, pushed his sniper too far. And the assault, well, as you can see there, he is pretty dead. Yes. Scout Kaya proven to be an utter nuisance. Scout can't die, I need repairs. But that definitely gave Comrade Obvious a bit of a chance of getting back. Not only a crunch squad, but the sniper team as well. That's actually going to hurt quite massively there on poor Iron Chet's manpower account. Your orders, comrade. Mentioning to note, no use of Stravnik or anything like that. He could call in another Soviet irregular unit. We actually see some machine guns being handed out here a bit. Scout car once more fit for the fight. <laughs> Noting though, no commanders here for Comrade Obvious at the moment. Panzer gonna deal out here. The Sturm Gewehrs. A bit of quad here between the two sides. I am Chet's I imagine a bit more cautious now that he's actually suffered a bit of a beating there. And Comrade Obvious perhaps not so eager to quickly losing whatever advantage he might have had. 
And I'm surprised he hasn't upgraded the scout car yet. Then again, that might be on the way. Scout car here, though. Heavy damage, heavy damage. And there goes Submachine Guns. Pulling forward. Across the road, and there goes Scout coming in support. Quite a bit of fire wrecking down there on the Comrade. And popping over here to Comrade that Obvious. Still holding up a reasonable force here. S tank will be Batan come out going up me noting here that I am Chet. Oh, Comrade Obvious, there's nothing really to stop it. He's got no anti tank weapons, in fact. Standing by. So he is, in fact, in a bit of a sticky situation if. For some reason here, he's in fact rushing for armor. Finally, is he not to go there? Go trying to rush forward, but at the same time, heavy fire here from the Grenadiers and the Scout Car. Quite a bit of a machine gun fire, proving to be an obstacle too great for their faith in Comrade Stalin to overcome. Right here, would have been good if he had the upgrade for it. Sort of quite heavier firepower that could probably knock out the scout car, but again, Comrade Obvious does not seem to be very interested. And there we go, T70 Light Tank arrives here for IM Chets. Rushing it forward, hoping to gain a small advantage here. As we can see, that Comrade Obvious is in fact obviously not prepared for it. Unit seems to be losing over here, out, yes. or at least somewhere. A mine went off there. Oh, nicely placed. In fact, going a nice channel has that down to one gun and he needs to fall back. T7 here proving an utter mess. Then it's quite close going down. Oh, Scheiße. There we go. Wiped up here. T7 is scout can't making short work of any stragglers. And an S one field here. The T7 just barges through. Taking on a mic down. And we're seeing actually mobile defense up. He might be opting for a Puma as a sort of emergency option then to sort of deal with this T70 rush. And oh dear, gonna this caught here on the retreat! Enemy armor is engaged! Nine times! Oh, never mind. Heavy losses right here in Fig to the T70. Punishing combat obvious for failing to prepare for world the obvious. Grenadiers ready. Getting some replacement troops out, but at the same time, man, he's trying to sort of keep a small manpower so ready to get that Puma out. <laughs> and finally upgrading the armored car here with the auto cannon. Increasing its firepower as well. Ready. Enemy forces are securing our the enemy has driven away. A nice bit of recon lines. mode here, trying to ensure he doesn't get caught by anything. It's done. In the meanwhile, I am Chet's basically pushing forward our as hard as possible, increase. gaining as much territory using the T-70 to basically keep him a bit on back foot, but there we go. Puma heavy armored car arrives. And he is held up here in a bunker, trying to sort of hide, and there we go. Contrast moving in there. T seems like going to move back, but now the Puma is on the hunt. And there we go, 50 minutes on fire, guys, he needs to fall back. So quick phone. And there we go, looks like they're about to go down. Contrast court actually went down there, and now the T7 here is going to fall prey to German armored reconnaissance. There we go. A country squad upgrade with veteran she lost plus the T70. All of a sudden, Comrade Obvious might have a bit of an advantage again despite having lost several gun air squads. Puma pulling up without not getting going to be very helpful against infantry. Shots firing and well, not quite connecting. We better off he tried to hunt down the scout car with the regulars in it. There you go, throwing out the scout car. Scout car awaiting orders. That's it, fully reinforced. How can we Troops help? Reinforcing for Deutschland. Ready for action. A bit quiet here. As Commodore was looming her head. And calling in a second Puma already, he might be right about further armor. And thinking his best chance is basically calling in another Puma, thus adding a small Puma patrol which could this cause a single tank character. of the T-34 kind a bit of a headache, as long as it's handled correctly. So right there, setting up roadblock with the armored cars. Mine's going up there, I mean, I'm checked is definitely diligent in that department, which is nice to see. Okay, 
And he's actually set up a support weapon pump on here now, taking a bit back and calling in a field gun. It's ready to use. Nice to see that alternate. Oh! Captain Mine went off there! Set off here by German stalwart fire. Cooking off most of the conscripts. Yuri, I told you standing on mines is bad idea. Map is definitely looking a bit peculiar at the moment. Sort of spread out a bit. Could it be? Could it be? Sounded like a flare here. No, nope. probably just my imagination. No, nope, there was a flare. There was a flare. And we need to see the Commodore just realizes something is off and pulls back. Alternating the road here, Cal at the teller mine, good thinking. And there you go, overdrive. Oh dear. Nice hit there from the scout car. Oh, oh Puma taking out the scout car. Second shot gets it. And the 2 2 2 joins in as well for the hunt. Well, it's an sneak forward here, caught by the field gun. Pretty nasty fire there from Conrad, obvious. Diligently turning him through the communists. Pack here. The enemy Which is enforcing. Get back on their feet. So quite the motorized force here for Conrad, obvious. Oh! Coming under fire, then field gun. Pull it back, pull it back. And again, the Puma, not really that effective. Again, and he's not without some veterans, you know, I think. He's there to get some accuracy bonuses. So there we go, sneaking up there with the infantry, taking advantage of the fact that the Pumas can't hit. Two snipers out now, really hung sort of slowly bleed out his opponent. A half tech could sort of negate that, or a mortar would also help quite a bit here for Combat Obvious. So, of course, I have to see what he actually does, but a mortar I think would be a nice idea. Troops sneaking up there, he's definitely aggressive here. I'm just finding weak spots and pouring in through the cracks. Nice infiltration tactics there, although we do see that Common Officer pulls off his own little trick and goes straight for the fuel point here. Panzer's here being charged straight by the conscripts. A bit of a dangerous move right there by I am checked. The Panzer's making short work here of the conscripts, even with their veterans. Although taking a few losses, they still took out a massive amount of casualties there. Mine went off there actually. Engineers look like they will escape, but not before crippling the. Puma. And slowly pushing forward his uh, regulars with sniper support. And again, the Puma trying to do something, but it's not really effective otherwise. I mean, I'm just probably been punished. And there you go, T-34 arrives, and there's an extra medium tank on the field. Things must get a bit more dangerous now here for Comrade Obvious. And looks like he's had to take up fully here. He might be hoping for some heavier stuff. Now that he's also got two fuel points. Another man went off there. Maiming a few more Germans. Ready for action. How can we help? Mines with the moon. There go T-34 rolls in. Forwards aggressively. Crushing their fences. Noting he's actually taking a bit of a longer path. He tries to avoid the panther fight with the Gunnarius. Nice little tactic there. He's a nice move there. Clearly Iron Chet is not completely hopeless with arm. And there we go. The other Pumas fit for the fight again. The two Pumas could probably try and obtain up there again. With field guns about, he's going to have a bit more of a hard time doing it. And we're seeing a second field gun here. Comrade Obvious seemingly going a bit on the defensive here, kind of is, and being placed in buildings wherever possible. And the armoured cars apparently acting as a bit of a mobile reserve, reacting to whatever happens. Oh! Wow, it hit the telemine, and the telemine did nothing. That's extremely rare, but can happen. Though I certainly feel the Comrade Obvious right there. 
Target weak point. Target to weak point. Ah, right there, Comet obvious. Missed a rather obvious chance to disable that T-34. Knock it out. Before it got away. Sniper fire here from the southern part of the village. Panzer is there losing half the men. A reckless escaping. A cruel fate. Then again, they might go down the other side. No. And there we go. Target weak point did go off there on the 234. Time for the mid game analysis though. I am Chetsy a bit on the back foot. Comrade obviously having been a bit aggressive with his maneuvers. But at the same time, there have been a slight few mistakes in terms of strategy that has left him a bit open and allowed Mr. Chetsy to get back on the field. And now he's got a tank, his opponent does. He's got several snipers, he's got several field guns. And he's set up in such a way that it's going to require some artillery to dig it out. I mean, the immediate choice would probably be getting some mortars out. They would be able to lay down a constant stream of artillery fire, of course, of the lighter kind, but certainly would probably be able to do the trick. Of course, since he teched up all the way, it could be he's aiming for the Panzerwerfer, but then, of course, he needs to sort of be able to sort of use it properly, otherwise he very much risks not hitting an awful lot. I mean, you generally need to sort of... I mean, if you just try to fire them from max range, and again, I have a propaganda castle video on that, by the way, check it out, but still, you're going to miss a lot more than if you sort of try to game in the close range, but still safe, to sort of, you know, get a more concentrated barrage. So, of course, question is, how will combat obvious handle this, but artillery would be one of the more immediate choices, in particular, since the commander's gone, what he otherwise doesn't have. A command panzer four might be an idea, or he could also aim for the Sturm Panzer IV. That might also have some interesting implication upon the survivability of Iron Chet's troops. Iron Chet's that otherwise should probably look into, well, getting a bit more infantry. I mean, he's got a lot of support, he's a bit like an infantry. Keep his tanks alive, don't try to get too risky with it right away and try to build up a larger armoured force. I mean, if he just keeps losing one, keep him on one T-34, he very much risks getting sort of hunted down and pounced upon by the two Pumas and then knocked out. Two Pumas can have that effect, but particular once one has target weak points, so that's a bit of a threat there towards Iron Chet's tanks. But on the other hand, if you can build up a sizable force, the Pumas won't really be able to keep up with it unless, of course, the combat obvious keep pushing, and in that case, there'll suddenly be a lot more vulnerability to something else. So there are some dangers there for combat obvious, but also for Iron Chet's. We'll, of course, have to see how this proceeds. They've opened up on us! Still coming forward. Taking a few shots there. And there we go. Puma took it right in from the T-34. Needs to fall back. There we go. Using its great speed. To get out. And there we go. The 2-2-2 auto takes it. Popping smoke in the process. Good, good. Combat near's approach here failed due to the Grenadiers. But there we go. Two sniper teams moving up. The lack of artillery is going to... There we go. Sniper's getting off a few good volleys. Invector's going up as well. They're actually looking pretty poor in terms of condition. Only one Pioneer squad can actually repair things at the moment. And there we go, second one arriving. Another one arrived right there. Looks like he popped in on his own, sort of drives some troops in, but sadly didn't quite work there. The snipers quickly provide a deadly counterfire, taking out the remainders of the Gunnerius, forcing only one man to run away. And there you go, heavy panther call going up there for Comrade Obvious. What shall it be going for? Shall it be the panther first? Shall it be a panther or shall it be a storm panzer? That, of course, is going to be a rather interesting question to see and how. Combat obvious will answer this. But there we go, heavy panzer corps is up and about. Let's provide necessary and vital support here for Germany. Keeping a close eye on manpower can't could tell us. That definitely looks like a Panzer is on the way. Only thing other than that, how it could a lot more manpower plus fuel. So he's opting for the artillery now. Question of course, cannot combat obviously get the full effect now. He's noting here a maximum. He's going ready to throw back some of the infantry a bit more. 
Coming up, he's still holding most of the map, he's still got the victory point advantage, but we are seeing that I'm checked to slowly clawing his way back and doing some rather unfriendly things. We built it as ordered. Mining up things there, good, good. Uh, we'll be able to get another T-34 soon. And there we go, Panzer F-42 arriving. Pretty much only part of Panzer divisions, I believe. Otherwise, if there was any sort of other rocket artillery needed, I was relying on Stukas of Fus. Then again, there was also a large part of Panzer divisions. Or the Niedelwerfer. It's a little fun fact there. Can't engage in the there we go, chain right hit. Armour can't need to fall back, pop smoke again. Garmin at obvious. Just get back, so we found this encounter tag up, he's going to lose his armoured cars! What are you thinking here, Comrade Obvious? Scheisse! Assault putting up, hands of F up! There we go, smoke up, but the scout car can clear out the Puma, though seems to have escaped successfully. Well, it's safe, semi successfully. And find the hands of F up towards here. Not sure what he was shooting at. I don't think there was anything there, to be honest. That just seems like a waste. There must have been a misclick. I hope it was a misclick. Snarf is getting mentioned one, not doing good either. Well, that definitely, I think, hurt our combat obvious quite a bit. With that rather ineffectual barrage, Tito or Puma needs to fall back here. Taking heavy damage. Pioneers suffering heavy losses. Poo hands of Evolt are falling back. No ball the situation looking pretty bad. Sadly, Combat Optus wasn't able to have a very great impact with his Panzer for giving his opponent a few chances of really getting back in the fight. In particular now. And certainly, personally, I would have opted for a perhaps a mortar or two right around here to sort of bombard things. That would definitely made it much harder for the snipers to sneak about. But also give me a chance to lay down some fire upon the field guns at the very least, lay down a larger smoke screen, and then charge head in. So there's some thoughts there. Second T-34 arrives here now. He's definitely got the armor advantage, whereas well, he's got the armored car advantage, which is not quite the same. Of course, second option might now be a strong hand for the Panther, though with more armor getting out. The Panther might be an increasing good idea. A note here, now he's firing at maximum range, and you might note the rockets barely hit anything. We I mean, again, had he hit fired from here and, you know, fired towards here, he'd probably been a lot more accurate and a lot more successful. That is really one of those things you have to keep out while using stuff like a Panzer Air or a Katrusa. You generally, I mean, you can fire from far away safely, but you're just not going to get much effect out compared to say if you fired up close as possible. So that is very important to keep in mind, and generally a good tip there to getting the most out of your Panzerwerfer or Katrusha. Still, the two Pumas are there, packed 40 here, but still, at the same time, things are going to get tricky here. Panzer gunners with Panzer Shrek's. This territory is ours. Enemy forces are up here, the Puma sort of trying to support the assault, but again, he lacks something to at least bombard the defenders with first. That's with Panzer X up as well. Veteran to the T-34, but I don't know if I was up there. We have incoming. And there we go, lost the Puma. A tragic loss right there for Germany. And for Combat Ops, and he lost. Oh, Panzer X, both are dropped! He needs to quickly secure both of them to ensure they don't want to answer the right. And there we go. Panzer F is slightly closer, still would have preferred it up here, I think. New units have arrived. Got a bit more effect out of this time around, though again, still didn't quite hit much. Sniper took a hit there, one down. The rest of the rapidly and safely escape. 
34, see a full retreat there from the Germans. Left flank seeing a bit of action as well. T-34, crude loaded and ready. Bit of a perilous situation. Puma here might want to pull back slightly. Might not be the wise idea at the front completely. And as all of this is happening, I'm Chet to sneak up the counter squad to go for the final victory point as well. Well, the other one apparently managed to regain the centre one, but that's likely not going to last for much longer. We do see as some flares popped dead. off. Jack Chin sure there might not be anything waiting there if he goes we in for it. At our disposal. Thorough, it would seem. Rather thorough. Area secured. Puma took a hit there. Still has target weak point. Esmond's up there to prevent a direct assault, and there we go. They're 22. Bringing in a kill there. Nice series of hits down the T34. And there we go. Panther actually arrives here for Comrade Obvious. Not a lot for it to really deal with except the two tanks, but you know. I think a Storm Panzer IV might also work, but that's another discussion. You should at the very least though get a fit a machine gun up for it. Increasing anti-infantry capabilities at the least. But the map is slowly falling out of his hands here. Point taken. Panzer Company from advancing. S-Man's going off there. Nice hit in the conscripts. Spang Minen, proving lethal as ever. Your command. Panzer is forced away with that man there going under Panzer F of Barrage in the hopes of getting something in there again from a farther, far away range. This time actually killing something, but still. Rather high scatter, limiting again the effect of it. Another Puma arriving. Can't help but think at least one Panzer IV command tank might prove advantageous. 30 people arriving here for Iron Church and popping back over to Comrade Obvious. Most obvious of comrades. Charging in this Puma straight in, I think. Common obvious might be getting a bit too bold here. The quick to pop smoke. Another assault going in here. We've got two maxims up here for Iron Chets. Stalling any further pushes towards here. Where Iron Chets is stuck from the stronghold. Panther strike going off. Panther firing coming out of fire with the field gun. Battery too, by the way. The walls with the machine gun. Oh, the Panther strike drops. So quick fun. Charging here, Panther moving in. Panther taking his own commentary 2T54. So quick fun! Close. But lots of snipers bunched up here, lots of things bunched up. Looks like he's actually moving closer here to decrease the scatter, that's good. Looks like an assault going here though again. Field gun really taking the toll on the Puma. I mean, he had a bit too far ahead of the field. No target weak point, by the way. And punch for firing in support of this area of the scene. Just not getting much out of it. He really doesn't even have much luck or fortune with that artillery at all. But second Puma Panther moving up here, trying to hunt down the T-34. Almost got one, almost got one, although it's all extremely close to the three. But no, both of the T-34s have escaped the wrath of the Wehrmacht. Comrade yeah. Obvious really was able to extract some very high losses here upon his opponent. Quite unfortunate. Yeah. And his Panzer Weffer so far really hasn't done much at all. It's not really earning itself in, to be honest. <laughs> Which is definitely going to prove problematic for Comrade Obvious in the longer run. He could consider saying more basically doing larger battle, just so he could try and aim for a Sturm Panzer IV. Can't help but feel that might add something he needs in this fight. Enemy contact! 
some punch, if you will. We also note here that I'm Chet's actually regularly using flares to sort of keep track of his opponent's movements. That's actually quite nice. Rare to see that used, but he's actually using regularly an alternating here that Combat Ops is actually regularly using counterattack tactics to quickly grab back territory. Grenadiers ready. Some nice ability uses there. He just can't help but feel he's not getting much out of his Panzerwerfer. Which done. is definitely quite a shame. Pioneers awaiting orders. And I certainly suspect the pet of mortars might have done more for him by now. Small advance here. Grenadiers reporting objective capture. And there you go, Chinese training again. Seems to forget about the few guns here. Heavy armor to the Puma, and there we go, engine damage. Not entirely sure what did there. Pop smoke, pop smoke, Neven. There we go. Good use of that. I mean, at least he's consistent with that. Some players would not be so. There you go. Veteran 2T34 flanking in. Nice hit there. Breaching Veteran 3. Increased rate of fight. Increased mobility. There we go. Another exemplary hit there on the Panther. Panther almost goes half health. There we go. In fact, down to half health. Just a few shots there from the T34. Almost knocking it out in the process. I mean, the new T34 definitely can present much more greater of a threat. Panther doing what he can, but overall the urban environments allow the T-34 to close in. Plus, of course, the overall tactics here. So, a bit of an unfortunate situation here. For Comrade, obviously, losing his Panther right there to the T-34s. Small assault here, not quite succeeding either. Another Puma arrives here, but I feel it won't be able to do much. We are losing the sector. So a nice situation going on here in the remnants of Samoski. Comrade Office is being utterly overrun by now. You have a rocket target? With nothing left to really hold back his opponent. The enemy is taking our territory. Half track ready. There you go, GG. GG. Game over there, a loss for the Germans. I mean, some nice plays from both sides, but I mean, to a certain extent, Comrade Obvious made a few mistakes here and there. He was a bit too bold in some regards, and you know, he just didn't get much of his Panzerwerfer in showing that it was essentially a loss of resources. And I think personally, he should have gone for a pair of mortars or perhaps a Sturm Panzer IV, or even a command tank. I mean, you know, he didn't perhaps do so much with his commander, at least he used the majority of them, but still, I think he'd done a bit more with some things. I feel like he could have done more towards his opponent, done a bit more damage, but again in several cases he ended up just sitting back and allowing IM Chats to basically slowly roll up snipers, field guns, everything and slowly push his way out until, you know, his opponent really couldn't resist him. Also some slightly unfortunate engagements here in the village. Catching his panther up like that, getting it stuck there so it couldn't maneuver out of the situation, keep range and frontal armor towards his opponent, allowing IM Chats to get close to the rear armor with the T thirty four up close and knock him out. In particular here with the veteran C3 T-34, which will have a high rate of fire, and that's actually able to fire much faster than the Panther knock it out like that. So that was actually a bit of some slightly unfortunate decisions right there by Commonwealth. Not to say that Arm Chets was not completely flawless. I mean, he certainly overextended himself several times. Lost quite a few units here and there, but overall, actually interesting strategy, and also nice to see the regulars actually being used. But I definitely feel like he played better than Comrade Obvious, and Comrade Obvious definitely could have made some better choices, I think. But that's just me. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, why not subscribe? Tell your friends. Share with everyone. If you didn't, you know, send it to me. Provide some feedback in the comments. Links and such, all that in the description. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.